What's, What's going, going on, on, Badger Nation? Badger Nation. Yes, we got it. <laughs> Welcome to the PBC Den Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Erickson Fasheen of Ad Badger. Welcome to your home for all things Amazon advertising tips, tricks, strategies, hacks, mindsets, and everything else you need in order to get the most from your Amazon advertising. Today, I am joined by the incredibly talented, he's a seller himself, he's a, an Ad Badger PBC campaign manager, Ryan Hoffaker. Ryan, how's life over there? Man, life, life is okay. Uh, I don't know if anybody, you know, I, you, I don't know if some of you families have been hit uh, like my family recent has uh, has been hit, but we had the, the, the stomach flu and uh, that was not fun, but this is like our first day of recovery. So I'm feeling much, much better. Too. Tough stuff. Tough stuff. Uh, well, thanks so much for making it to the show today. We've got a really neat little episode, uh, which is, it's quick, it's tactical, it should add a new tool to your tool set to allow you to think about getting things done easier, faster, quicker. You know, so much of PPC management is really just knowing what kind of data you can get, knowing what you can do with that data and manipulating it, being comfortable with like the spreadsheet to move it around. And that's kind of what we're talking about today, um, which is the export button. Um, so I don't know how many people have noticed it or have used it, um, but when you're inside the Amazon advertising ad console and you look at any table, so you're looking at your campaigns or your ad groups for a campaign or uh, your product targets or your keywords or your even your product ads for a campaign, near the date selector where you would change the dates, Ryan, tell the good people out there what you see near the date selector. I see this little button. It is called the export button. And I think, I, you know, you, we were talking this before the show. I, I agree with you. I think it is a little button that is rarely talked about, but highly, highly valuable. And uh, so we're going to talk about today just some of the fun ways in which you can use yes. it. Yes. We're going to give you three quick ways uh, that you can use this. And I also think as a primer or for our friends in the UK, a, a primer for... <laughs> for <laughs> using it if you've never used bulk files which are massive files with all the information in your account thrown at you at once we have a lot of episodes on getting comfortable with bulk files but if you and you can probably see those in the description of this video and of this podcast but if you've never played around with bulk files which give you every single nook and cranny of your account in a single file so it could be pretty overwhelming you know, I uh, I think back to the first time I once saw a bulk file. I was so young back then, but uh, it takes time to get battle hardened to make you comfortable <laughs> with bulk files. It was a calm spring day, and I didn't know what to expect, and there I was uh, with thirty thousand rows and, and about fifty columns in front of me. But no, seriously, bulk files give you every single piece of information across your entire account. This export button. It's much different. It's a much more lightweight. It's a lot friendlier. It's literally just the things that you are looking at. So if you're looking at your campaigns, you hit export, you'll just get your campaign data. If you're looking at keywords from a certain ad group, you click export, you'll just get the export of those keywords that you're looking at. Now, of course, you might be asking, well, if I can see it in the ad console, why would I need to click this export button? And we're, we're gonna talk about that today. So there's, there's just a benefit in being able to get it in a spreadsheet because then you can move it around, you can do some cool things with it. Uh, should we just get right into the first thing that you can do here? Let's dive in, absolutely. Alrighty. I'll take the first one. So earlier this week, I was coaching uh, one of our PPC clients, we have PPC coaching here, and I was coaching them up, and we noticed something interesting, which was ROAS was way high this week. Uh, it was much, much higher than, than usual. Uh, like maybe the normal ROAS was like a 3X. This week it was like 10X. It was like pushing 10X. I was, we we're like, okay, that's awesome. And then we noticed that sales were down. So in, in that same time where the ROAS jumped, sales went down. 
And we just wanted to assess where those changes happened Um, because what the client was doing was doing some bid optimization where they were going in and they were rethinking the way that they did bids and they were lowering bids. So, you know, as everybody knows, if you've been listening to the show, we talk a lot about bid optimization. One way to boost ROAS or conversely lower ACoS is to reduce your bids. Um, So that was mission accomplished where the ROAS jumped up way high, but we lost some clicks because we reduced bids. So we wanted to sort of isolate where those big changes happen so that we can maybe go in and really think about like, are we happy with the ROAS? We wanna stay there? Do we maybe wanna push it, step on the gas a little bit more to boost volume? Very common situation, except what campaigns do we need to focus on? You know, when you've got hundreds of campaigns, it's gonna be very difficult for you to sort of assess it. And inside the default ad console, there's no good tool that sort of shows you change over time. Um, So what can you do? So what we did was we looked at the campaign view. We're looking at all these campaigns. We clicked the export button over the time frame with a super high ROAS. Now we labeled that file as like high ROAS time. And then we went to the different time frame, the time frame immediately before this, like the week before, and we downloaded that export file. And then we have times where the ROAS was super high, but volume was low, right to the previous time where the ROAS was lower, but the volume was higher. Then we were able to basically create a third document where we were just dropping in. We dropped in the campaign name from each uh, file. Then we dropped in clicks, time frame A, time frame B. Then we can add a third column that says change in clicks. So we were able to get a change in clicks from the time frame A to time frame B, and we can see where the big changes in clicks were. Then we dropped in orders from time frame A, time frame B, and then we were able to add another column, change in orders. So all of a sudden, uh, then we did another one. We added an ACoS, change in ACoS. So all of a sudden now, we were able to sort these columns in this third document to find where the biggest ACoS jumps were, where the biggest change in orders was, where the biggest change in clicks was. And it made it super easy for us to just go directly to that campaign and rethink, hey, did we reduce bids too much? Or you know, maybe we didn't reduce them enough or anything like that. And it helped alleviate some of the stress that the, that the client was feeling when they first noticed this and they were like, uh-oh, I maybe reduced volume too much. The ROAS is great, but I'm a little nervous about volume. Where do I begin? And in about five minutes, we had exactly where, what campaigns had the reduction in orders the most. We were able to go in there, readjust bids, and it was awesome. So that is the first usage. Um, if you wanna get some change over time in just a few minutes. It only takes about five minutes. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, uh, that you know, as you're talking, one of the things that I'm thinking about is when you do have a problem, especially as a business owner, some, some, one of my temptations is to not look at the data, right? Oh, man. Uh, Tell but, me about it. So when you, but what we're, do, what we're giving you right now is, okay, you do, if you have a problem, you want to look at square in the face. And you want to look at the details at a granular level so you can figure out the changes that you need to make. And so uh, I, I think what you, what you did with that client was awesome because, uh, you know, when you have information, it, it does alleviate the stress. And that's, that's, that's half the battle in this, in this business game that we're in is keeping a, a level mindset going in the direction that we need to go. Yes, so. For sure. Yes. And I totally feel the call sometimes, Uh, you know, especially as business owners, you know, we, you know, can take it personally and, uh, you know, we feel the decrease or we feel the increase uh, a lot down to our core. So it's like, hey, if I don't look at it, maybe it doesn't exist or maybe it'll just fix itself. (laughs) Uh, But yes, this allows you. And I think over time you do get battle hardened. You do get a, a lot more comfortable with just digging in and seeing it, it, you sort of like build up your your muscle to analyze data in this way to see where a drop happened and be able to go in uh, less emotionally and address it. So this sort of export button, 
Um, you could accomplish the same thing using a bulk file, but you're gonna get lots of extra rows and columns that you might not need when all you're trying to do is get a changeover two time periods per campaign. If we go in deeper, so let's say you find a campaign where a drop happened. You can go into that campaign and then you can look at the keywords of that campaign. Uh, and you can do the exact same thing. So you can do the change over time on a per keyword basis. Once you've identified the campaigns that had the change, you can go in, do this exact same thing with the ad groups or the keywords. Now, this is where having tighter campaigns is a massive benefit. Um, so we talk a lot about the show, talking about campaign structure. Uh, we'll try to include it in the show notes as well uh, when we talk about campaign structure and some of the benefits of having tighter campaign structure. Uh, and when I say tighter campaign structure, I mean fewer products per campaign, fewer ad groups per campaign, fewer keywords per ad group, just having tighter campaigns so that you're able to more easily allocate budget, you're more easy, you're more easy, whoa, can't talk, you're more easily able to set placement adjustments and all of those good things. It also helps with analysis as well. So if you had a campaign with, you know, if you only had three campaigns and then in each campaign you had 50 ad groups and then in each ad group you had 50 products and 200 keywords, it's going to make this kind of like digging in, like where was the change and how did it happen a little bit more difficult. So this is where having tight campaign structure uh, is helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's move to point number, number two. Yeah. You know, I, in our notes here, we had point one was the campaign change over time. And then I think point two is just sort of the reminder that you can also do this on a per keyword and per ad group level. So I think we're ready to just leap right into uh, point three, which is uh, your point. I'm passing you the ball, Ryan. Okay. Uh, point number three. Yeah. When, when Michael was mentioned, when we were talking about this before the show, I actually just used this a few weeks ago, and here's how I do it. You know, I, I ran into the situation. I'm running an account with uh, a couple variations that were slightly – the keywords that I wanted to target in these variations were very, very different from the variations in the rest of the campaign. So I basically went into the group of campaigns that um, – where I had the, the keywords uh, set up for the new variations – Press the export key, dropped them into a file. I think I had two ad groups, so I had to hit the export button twice, drop them into a file in order to uh, uh, negative exact those same keywords in the rest of the campaigns. Uh, and I had to do, it's pretty complicated, but I had to do the reverse on, on these very tighter situations within that campaign. But that's how I used it, is uh, jumping into the campaigns, hitting export, created a file so that I could set those up as negative exact in other campaigns. So, yeah. Right. So just to recap there, you create a new campaign and you didn't want it to trigger for the keywords. Cause like, I assume that these products were similar, right? Like some of the keywords yes. could potentially trigger in either campaign. And you wanted to almost like uh, funnel certain searches into one campaign and keep certain searches out of the other campaign. So hitting the export button was an easy way to just grab all those keywords and then just quickly add those as negative exacts to the new campaign that you created. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And you know, to be honest with you, I, I had, when I set up these new initial campaigns um, and I went back to look, the primary variation was still dominating on some of these keywords and uh, so that was my fix was I had to go back and make sure that these new set of keywords were negative exact, ne negative exacted out in the other campaigns so that uh, this, these new variations would show for these new set of keywords. Right. Um, so that's what was going on. And that was a fix that I needed to needed to do with that so and i think this is so great too because I, i'll get on the phone with clients over here at ad badger and you know we do we have our coaching program and periodically i'll see you know i'll say something like hey why don't you share your screen to walk me through uh the situation and you know it's it's helpful to, to have the client explain it in their own words and it's really cool to see them like click around to see like how they interact with 
the um, ad console. And it's so great to be able to say, hey, did you know that export button can give you that data in an Excel spreadsheet? And then you can manipulate it around, you can move it around, uh, you can, you know, compare two different time frames, you can compare different places and different things. And it really illuminating, like it really does open your eyes to see what's possible, how you can move the data around, how you can use it. And we've given people some various ways to do it this episode. Um, I don't know if there's much more to say other than like, go check it out. Like, it could be pretty helpful. I think the easiest thing, the time frame analysis, uh, you can do it on keywords, campaigns, uh, ad groups, uh, as well as the, you know, if you wanted to basically like deduplicate or like add the positive keywords from one ad group as negatives somewhere else, like that's a quick way to do it as well. I love these kinds of episodes. It's yeah. quick, actionable, um, hopefully opens up people's eyes to some new workflows that they didn't know. Um, cause I know the panic, I know like the frustration that happens when you open up an account and you can tell that there was a change either from one month to the next or one week to the next or a two week period. And I know how frustrating it is. And as a good digital marketer, you want to go in there and like identify where the change happened. And this is a quick way. Like, you know, if you're comfortable with the, like, downloading the spreadsheet, you're able to do it in like 90 seconds, like where the change in clicks, orders, spend, so on and so forth. For all of your campaigns, you can get that done in, you know, 90 seconds, three minutes. It's, it, you'll get pretty quick at it. Yeah. And I would say too, I, I think if I were to examine kind of my learning journey over the last four to six months in Amazon PPC, it's kind of the more detailed the ability to manipulate data on a on a on a smaller level on a detailed level in order to make good decisions and yeah. i think this export button play with it yeah like you said play with it get in there and we've just given you a couple of examples of how to use it but i'm sure there's plenty plenty of other ways to yeah. do it um uh and it'll, I, it'll be valuable for you to look at the look at the information on, on a small level in order to make good decisions that's right well, I think we said all there is, needs to be said. Um, I'm happy that you and your family are recovered from the stomach flu. Um, meanwhile, I'll just be here in Austin struggling with allergies uh, as every tree, grass, uh, what else gives you allergies? Is just throwing their uh, pollen, which it's, uh, yeah, it's tough. Austin is known for having awful awful allergies uh, everyone i know is just blowing their nose everywhere uh so it's tough it's tough this time of year and without further ado we will see you next week here on the ppcn podcast giving you more amazon advertising strategies to help you take it to the next level have a good one everybody take care y'all